Hey beautiful people, today I wanted to share with you a very basic but very important step when it comes to your workflow when dealing with images, and that is importing. I think it's very important to know how to use all functionalities within the programs and tools that you use online to edit your images. Being able to organize properly, being able to troubleshoot when there's a problem is so important, especially if you're gonna be doing anything in like a much more stressful environment like commercial world and things like that you got to know how to use your software so actually let's just jump right into it and let's just start with the basics so over here we have your sources typically when if you, whenever you have like hard drives plugged in lightroom is going to read it as files and then your camera or your sd card or cf card whatever is going to come under devices so that's very straightforward, very basic. And you just kind of navigate to the spot, to the images that you want to import. So here I'm just going to use this as an example. So here we have your preview box here in the center. Now let me just cover the basics and let's go down to the bottom here. You have options for viewing. So you can go full screen or you can go, you know, tiles as you can see here. You can check all of them or uncheck all of them for quick selections. Here's pretty important too, because if you have, if you're the type of person who imports their videos and photos together, you can sort them by media type and then also capture time and things like that. So that's quite important as well. Here you can adjust your thumbnail size as so. At the bottom here, you can see it says import preset. Now I do not test this at all because you know I'm not trying to add a preset as I load in. I, I shoot completely raw. Um, almost as flat as possible so I can have full control later on in my next steps between Lightroom and Photoshop. As we navigate further up, we have four options here. Copying your files as DNG. Now this applies only to those who shoot raw images. DNG is a digital negative, which is another format that Adobe has created to make a smaller raw file but still retain all of the information. But as soon as I bring it into Lightroom, I convert it directly to DNG, which compresses it slightly, but say it still has all the information that I need for it. Okay, so the next step is says copy. Now, basically, this means if you have, if you're not really trying to um, change to DNG, you just hit copy and it's going to keep the original raw file or whatever file that you're trying to import, JPEG, PNG, anything like that. So for the last option, if you have a folder that's already been created or you just want to add on to another folder, you just click the add option and it's going to just take those images and just add it to the collection that you have. Next, we're going to move over to the last step when importing. And this is going to be really important to understand file sequences or how file structure works. Because once you click here, this root is going to tell you where your images are going. If you haven't had that set up before, if you don't know exactly where you're going, I suggest that you change the destination and figure out where exactly your images are leading to. Because sometimes Lightroom will automatically place images on your main hard drive on your computer. And as best practice, when it comes to file storage, you want to have your images on a separate drive, just as a fail safe and have a backup of that as well. So to double check that always, you know, you tell Lightroom where exactly where you want, where exactly where you want your images to go. Next here we have file handling. Now this is this is what I normally do. Um, I don't have the build build smart previews. I think that slows down Lightroom a little bit. You can always go into preference and then change the preview size. After that, I always check on do not import uh, suspected duplicates. So. If you already have images on your card and you haven't cleaned them off and you shot a new sh new photo shoot, instead of worrying about duplicates and having to delete them later, I just keep this on and that's what Lightroom is doing right now. It's graying out the ones that are already there. This is a great option, but I don't have like a secondary hard drive to make this second copy. I would like to do that actually in the future. Um, this would just make a duplicate, a redundancy of images coming in. So it'll take it and move it to another hard drive. Add collection, you can always do that later, but if you want to do it now, you know, you press that and you tell what collection you want to drop it in. 
Next is file handling, file renaming. I rename my files once I export, but if you wanted to rename them as they're coming in so you can stay more organized, it's really up to you, it's your preference. This option here is pretty important, applying during, apply during import. Um, if you have not, well, before I jump into that, of course it says develop settings. This again, presets that you can add onto while you import, but it's up to you, it's your preference. But here, metadata, this is really important. If you have not set up your metadata for your images when you're importing Lightroom, that is a must. Um, because metadata is going to be baked into your image. We say baked in. It's going to be attached to your image wherever you upload it, upload it online. So this will help you save. This will save you in the end if someone decides to steal your image. And especially if you you have your images copyrighted, because you have that information of the copyright in the pre in the metadata that you have set. Now this is actually an old one, so it's telling me to fill in this. But once you hit metadata presets, you can go in and type in all the information of your copyright, of you, who you are and things like that. So if somebody does decide to steal your image, you have all the information there and you have proof that is your image. So that's really, really important to have. Again, keywords, I like to use keywords. Uh, this allows you to really search an image um, that you remember the day, particular day, the event, and things like that. So it's good to have that handy. And lastly, destination. This one gets kind of confusing. Um, I, it got confusing for me when I first started doing this, but this is really, you know, goes back to your file um, file structure when you're when, in, when you're importing. So, and this will allow you to really troubleshoot, troubleshoot a lot of things when you lose images. You can just backtrack and see where the file naming is or what the file structure is. Um, one thing I've learned, if you are adding new images and you notice that, for instance, if, you, if I was to click on the 2017 folder here in Lightroom, as you can see, it automatically creates a subset folder and I don't want that to happen. So basically you would have to click on folder photos and then within that Lightroom is going to automatically add whatever images I took in 2017 to this folder rather than making a subfolder in 2017. Hope that makes sense. So I just always click the main, I guess you can say the parent folder of the images and then Lightroom will automatically make a child folder into that parent folder. Um, and then you can tell it to organize by date. There's a particular format here as well. Um, and then, yeah, that's really what it is. If you want to create a folder here within Lightroom, you hit create new folder and then it'll ask you where you want to place it and things like that. And so once you have all that set, you just go ahead and hit import. I hope this was helpful and stay tuned for the next one. I'll be going over some of the tabs and modules in Lightroom and also the preferences. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. Let me know your thoughts below. Um, share, this, share this with someone who's new to Lightroom and make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, peace.